Good morning, church. Why don't you go ahead and stand as we begin in our time of worship this morning. God, we lift you up. You're so worthy of our worship. You're so worthy of our praise, God. So we lift up our voice to you. We lift up our hands to you, God, in reverence. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to sing, he's coming on the clouds. Good morning. You guys may be seated. And some of you guys are like, what are you doing? You're out of order. I know. Today is a different day. It's special. And so uh, we're going to do switch things around a little bit, keep you on your toes. But welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Pastor Matt. If we've never met before, I'd love the opportunity to meet with you. Um, I invite you, if you're a guest with us this morning in person, to stop by the Connect Center at the conclusion of service. We'd love to put a gift in your hands this morning. But we'd also uh, like to uh, meet with you, connect with you back there. If you're watching online, you can do that in the app with the Next Step card. And so uh, we invite you to do that. A um, couple announcements for you, but we're going to start with uh, 
One thing first is uh, BGMC offering. So our kids are here. If our kids could come and they are raising money for BGMC, so you can send them around. They are pretty. Uh, just warning you, they are pretty vicious and. Uh, they were pretty non-pressure when it comes to the offering, but these kids, they're cutthroat, and um, they're raising money for missions. So while they do that, we, it is a, a special morning today, and so I want to invite Pastor Natalie to come. Please welcome Pastor Natalie. Welcome back. She has, uh, she's, I'll, I'll let her tell her story, but she's got to get back up to Kids Church but this is her first Sunday, and we're so excited about that. But Pastor Natalie, why don't you share just a few, little bit about yourself and how you came back here. So my name is Pastor Natalie. I am our new kids pastor. <laughs> I am so excited to be back um, at CLF. So I actually grew up here. Um, I started coming as a student in like 2011. So Pastor Matt was actually my youth pastor. That can give you an idea of how old he is. I like to joke <laughs> that he's pretty old. Um, so I felt called into ministry when I was about 16, 17, went to North Central uh, to receive my degree in family ministries and then uh, became a kids pastor in Wapaka for about four years. And now I am back here and I am ready to minister to our children uh, and help them grow in their relationship with Christ. So very excited. All right. Thank you. We'll let you off the hook. I know she's like, I don't want to do this. Well, it's okay. You can do this. What's that? That's why she's with the kids. Yeah. She also threw me under the bus too. So that's fine. We'll talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is okay. Well, there's, there's a great... Oh, filter. Hey, welcome again. We're so glad that you're here. If our ushers could also prepare for the, uh, the offering this morning, uh, we'll, we'll uh, receive that at this time as well. So ushers, if you could come. And uh, just as, as they come, just a, a reminder, there's a number of different ways that you can uh, give. You can give, there's a black box in the back. You can give in person throughout the, the week at the office at any time or online at any uh, special time. Uh, just a uh, note that today we do have a guest speaker who's coming from City on a Hill in Milwaukee. And so he's one of, they're one of our, our missionaries that we support. And so just a, a note that at the end of service, we will have ushers at the doors if you want to give directly to them this morning. But let's pray over the, the offering this morning and the announcements. I almost said that. Lord, help me with the announcements. I'm terrible. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day, and Lord, I pray your blessing on this time that we share together. I pray your blessing on this offering. I pray um, that you would bless every gift and giver now. Lord, as we uh, trust you and we give as a part of our worship and love for you, not out of obligation or duty, but Lord, in worship and, and hearts full of faith and love for you. Lord, I pray that you would bless these gifts now. I pray, pray that you would bless the ministries of this church. I pray that you would bless our missionaries this morning. And Father, uh, we also just take a moment to lift up every church in the, in the community this morning. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would visit them in a powerful way today. I pray that your gospel would be preached. I pray that your word would be clear this morning in every church in this community. And ultimately, Jesus, you would be glorified. So we pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ushers, you can receive this morning's tithes and offerings. Okay, a couple announcements for you this morning. Uh, this week... Is, uh, is Easter Sunday, and so we have a special Good Friday service uh, at 6.30 p.m. It's going to be a shorter service, so about 45 minutes roughly, simple worship, communion, and a message. So that is this Friday at 6.30 p.m. This uh, upcoming Sunday, this upcoming Sunday only, two services, all right? So we're switching times for just this next week. Pay attention. So next week, services are at 8.30 and 10.30. What time are services next week? 8.30 Thank you. You cheated by looking at the screen. That's okay. Helping you out. Uh, the week after, what time is service? 9.30. 930. All right. Just making sure you're with me here because uh, there's going to be a few of you who forget and um, you just get to hang out with us extra long, I guess. Um, there's also uh, uh, Easter invites in the Connect Center. If you want to use those to invite a friend or a neighbor, you can feel free to do that. Also, a couple more things coming up is we have our Marriage Matters events. That is going to be April 6th 
right here at 6 p.m. Nate and Aaron Dorn will be sharing their testimony. It's going to be an awesome time. And with our Marriage Matters events, those are always potluck-style dinners, so please bring a dish to pass. That is April 6th at 6 p.m. Also, I'm told to really promote and pump this next one up. Um, dips and desserts uh, with Pastor Natalie is coming up. And that's April 7th, and that is at noon, and that is for all ladies 6th grade and older. So this is a great time for you to get to, to know, to meet, and to interrogate Pastor Natalie. It'll be a great time. We invite you to do that. So dips and desserts, April 7th at noon for all ladies, 6th grade and older. Also coming up is Daughters of the King. Ladies, this is your, like, one of your really big events of the year. You're going to want to be here. That is Saturday, April 27th from 9 to 11 a.m. And join, uh, join us for a, not, not me personally, as when I say us, but that's what the card says. Join us, but not past my. This is a, a women's event, okay? For a light brunch, worship, and a word of encouragement from Amanda. Hey, Amanda, you're preaching. That'll be awesome. Um, <laughs> each table, that's the amazing what you find out when you do the announcements. Each table is hosted and decorated by ladies in the church, and registration is $5, and they're asking that you RSVP by April 21st. So, uh, $5 RSVP April 21st, but the event is Saturday, April 27th from 9 to 11. Last announcement for you this morning is that the youth uh, group is having a lock-in this Wednesday, it's spring break for a lot of our kids, so uh, this Wednesday they're going to do a normal youth service, a uh, $10 uh, registration fee cost for the event, and that'll be, uh, Pastor Ben will send out more details, but just so you know, parents, parents, this might be the first and only time you hear this, that there's a youth event this Wednesday night, because our kids are such great relayers of information, but there is that, also check your email, Pastor Ben is letting you know uh, about that, and with that there is no word warriors this Wednesday. But there is youth, and there is a youth lock-in. So with that, let's stand, and let's go back into a time of worship. I'd like to invite the prayer team forward. These altars are open as we continue in worship. If you are in need of prayer this morning, I will probably say this every week, but if you are in need of prayer this morning, please come forward. Please receive prayer. Let somebody take your hand and pray with you. You are not alone in whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through. You are not alone. So let's continue in worship. God, we praise you. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, over all these years, God. You are so true. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. Trusting God, my Savior. My 
should not be here. You should not have made it through, but for God. God, you have been so good to us. You have been so faithful to us, God. And so we just love to sing about your faithfulness, to sing about how good you've been. Life is not perfect, but your perfect love gets us through life, God. So God, remind us this morning, if we have forgotten of those times, that we shouldn't have made it through. Show us your hand in those seasons of our life. Maybe you're in that season right now. You do not know how you're making it, and it is by the will of God, by the hand of God, by the favor of God on your life, that you are making it, and you are going to make it through. You are going to 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 make it through this season. Somebody just needs to encourage themselves. Say, God, I'm going to make it through with your, I'm going to take your hand and I'm going to make it through this season. I'm going to come out on the other side of this better 
stronger, closer to you. You're so faithful, God. you've kept and every need you've met Lord I'm so grateful you were with me every step and I never will forget cause when I think of how you've blessed me how your hand has never let me go it's never let me go have been so good to me. God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. So good to me. And God, I can't believe how you love me. What a friend you have been. Have a friend in Jesus. Oh, I call you Savior for the blood that washed me clean, for the wrongs that you've redeemed. I know you're able, and my eyes don't have to see one more reason to believe cause when I think of how you bless me how your hand has never let me go it's never let me go and you have been so good to me And I just want to thank you, Lord, and for every mountain, and for every time you brought me through. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord, and for your forgiveness, and for how you never turned away. I call you faithful, and I just want to thank you, Lord. And for your salvation, you paid the price I couldn't pay. I call you faithful. I just want to thank you, Lord. And I just want to thank you, Lord.
each and every day, through each and every season of life. And Lord, we just want to thank you. Before we move on, can we just pause and just give God thanks in your own words? Come on, use your words this morning. Say, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me. God, thank you for saving me. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for saving our marriage. Thank you, whatever it might be, just take a moment and say, God, thank you. Maybe that's all you can get out. It's Jesus, thank you. Well, let it be with all that you have. Jesus, thank you. Lord, we praise you. We give you honor today. We give you our worship. And Lord, as we now look to spend time in your word, God, I pray that you would anoint the message today. God, I pray that you would speak through Pastor Art as he comes in just a moment. And I pray that you would speak directly to us. May our hearts be ready ground for your word to be planted. And God, may you do what you want in our hearts and our lives today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You guys may be seated. And welcome. morning. Um, welcome again. Yeah, come on up. Uh, well, please welcome uh, Art Cerna from City on a Hill. He's going to share this morning's uh, message with us today. We are... Am I on? Hello? Test. Is it green? It's green here. It's green. Hey, test, okay. test, test, test. We good? Test. We good. One, two. Okay. Well, hey, uh, Art's coming. He's going to share a message with us today. If I could also just have Cindy please stand. Cindy Grady, she has been leading and uh, helping. Uh, Turn around. Come on, Cindy, we got to show Thanks, you Cindy. off. I appreciate you. I, we, you. We just want to Thank appreciate you. Cindy and all the work that she's doing. And also just want you to know, Cindy's been leading trips to City on a Hill for a while. A while. <laughs> Let's just go with that. And, um, and so... Cindy and I were talking and going, man, I think there's a lot of people that don't know. Four through sixth graders, you're dismissed with Pastor Ben. <laughs> we're going to figure this morning out, okay? Uh, but Cindy's been leading us, and so uh, just realize that there's probably a lot of us here today that don't know what City on a Hill is, what their mission is, and, uh, and so today, so through that conversation, Cindy, we honor you, but we are inviting Art Cerner, the director of City on a Hill, to come and share about City on a Hill, but also to challenge us awesome. through the reading of the word this morning. So, Art, thank you for coming. Thanks, brother. Bless you. Thank you. Let's please welcome Art Cerner this thank morning. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Back there for, for, for the mic. I appreciate it. So I'm here. Cindy, thank you for your service, and thank you. There's several of you that come and, and labor with us at City on a Hill, Milwaukee. I want to acknowledge uh, my wife, Karen, is here, my son, uh, John, and then my daughter, Tanya, went over to Kids Church, I think. But uh, we have a table in the back. I, I do encourage you. We'd love to meet you. You support us. When I looked, at, it's been at least 15 years. Uh, that you've been supporting the ministry of City on a Hill, uh, and we couldn't do what we do. I had the blessing to meet one of your, I would call him a prayer warrior back there, so it's good to meet you. But I said, we, we need your prayers, first and foremost. We can't do the type of ministry we do without your prayers. So um, if it's okay with you, I feel because of that length of support and partnership, I, I feel like I'm at home. So I, I will not be maybe as formal as that might be in other places. I, I'll just kind of share a bit more of my personal story. We'll definitely get into the scripture, but I, I feel this is, Amanda, Matt, this is a hungry church. I feel the pool on, 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 on the gift. I, I feel this hunger that's inside of you. So I, I will just share, I'll share about City Hill, but first of all, so I, 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 I've been in ministry for a, a large part of my life. I, I came to Christ. I grew up, my family's from Mexico. Um, we lived in the border town, and, and that's an area. God is moving in the borders of America right now. He's doing something for sure. But I, I grew up in South Texas, Rio Grande Valley, RGV, uh, and was born in McAllen, Texas, the major border crossing. And we lived, so back then, my, my Parents were kind of learning the language. So they worked in Texas, but they had their home in Mexico across the border. So anyone been to Reynosa, Mexico on a mission trip? Reynosa, Mexico. 
No, no, okay. Have you been to Reno, New Mexico, honey? Uh, she has. Uh, so she, yeah, so she's been on mission trips there. So we, so that's, that's I actually was born in McAllen. I was, I'm a twin, not identical. A twin brother and I were born in McAllen, and then my folks had their home in Reynosa. So we went to school, kinder through third grade. And then the Lord moved, and, and my younger brother was born in Reynosa, and then we moved to McAllen and started school in the American educational system. I, I don't know how you feel about that, but in fourth grade. So we, but they did a fine job in, in my generation. They, they taught us well. We did great in school. Uh, and that really created a pathway out of poverty for our family, where my, my grandfather was illiterate, never learned to read. But God still used the system. Uh, he, he, they were, my mom's side of the family, deeply Catholic. Um, but they were devout Catholics. There's this cultural Catholics, uh, and we're like, we go in Easter and like, you know the thing, but we, we don't like try to pursue anything. But uh, my, my grandfather had an encounter with, with the Lord uh, through that. It, the Lord radically delivered him from alcoholism, but never knew to read. But my, my grandmother would read the word to him. Amen. Would we just read the word to him? He would, so he understood how to meditate. The, the Psalms talk about the meditating on the word of the Lord. I mean, he had to, right? Because he had to remember. And so he, in, in, in his time, and God moved through him in miracles. I don't know how God does that, but he did that for him. He honored him. And, and, and I grew up listening to those things. So I, I was a good Catholic, and, and people say, I think you might be a priest because you feel there's something in your life. And I wasn't quite ready to go there, um, but I was a student athlete, so I was big into sports, and it kept me sane and as a high, school, who, high schooler. But I met the Lord through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. Anyone heard of heard that, Fellowship of Christian Athletes? So I learned discipline, and I learned how to read the Word, how to develop a relationship. Paul talks, the Apostle Paul talks about running the race, as in to win the race. So I, I learned how to live my life in that way. Uh, but I, immediately after I came to the Lord, I recognized I'm not perfect by my wife can tell you I'm not perfect by any means. I needed to be saved. Uh, I had plenty, plenty trauma in my life uh, given, you know, poverty just as a way for the enemy to come in. It's a lot of trauma. There tends to be a lot of abuse. There tends to be just a lot of lack, a lot of disappointment, a lot of hopelessness. But God, I, I, and I feel like some of you just need to hear that. God can heal anything. It doesn't matter to God. It doesn't matter how bad, how horrible, and humans can be just so evil to each other. Um, and, but God redeemed me. He put me on a journey so from that point. And, and I did get and went to Bible school and did all of that. But God called me to the marketplace, meaning working with families. He had done such a restorative thing in my family that I felt God said, like, that's your calling is to do this. Support families to be strong. Uh, I believe it's connected to God's design in the book of Genesis, right? He created a family and he gave them a commission. Go and spread my goodness all over the earth. And they messed up, but God still has a plan. He still had a plan B. Uh, and so he, he, we at City on a Hill feel compelled to be a community of transformation. That's what it feels like to us to be, to listen to the Lord and obey him. So I feel for some of you, uh, uh, he desires, the Lord desires you to see what ministry looks like in the way that God designed it. Strong families, families serving together, growing in the Lord being obedient, hearing his voice. And God does speak still, y'all. He still speaks to his people. Uh, he gave his Holy Spirit that you may hear that. And he can speak to you. And I just, some of you just need to hear, you're not a mistake. You're not a mistake. And it's not just like, oh, my wife or my husband or this. This is like, I come because of them and it's all good. But God said you were created in his image, in his likeness. And if you're sitting here, you're not a mistake. God has a plan for you, and he has a purpose. So in the work that we do at City on a Hill, we're about, we work with people that have grown up in generational poverty. Well, what is that? Well, it's, it's a lack of different things that you would need to be a healthy human being. It's emotional poverty. Uh, it's relational poverty. It's financial poverty. It's lack of resources. But it's not just like in one generation. It's happening over multiple generations. So in the book of Exodus, you kind of hear the impact of that, of a generation of people that have been through some oppression over 
long period of time over generations. And it does something to your psyche. It does something to the way you think. It does something to hope. The Bible calls it despondency in, in that time. So we, we are called to serve at City on a Hill because of the obedience of a number of people years, years ago. That I hear, I've heard many stories of people who are here. I, I've only been there for now four years. This is my fourth year. So I, I, there's a, we're 23 years in to this mission, right? And somebody just had the audacity to believe God and said there was this massive building, campus really, of 300,000 plus square feet of property, multiple buildings. In, in one of the major cities in America, uh, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just 10 blocks from Marquette University, downtown, the seat of government. It's a, Milwaukee is the largest city in, in Wisconsin. So it just, if you read the book of Acts, God has a way to do things in major cities. He does stuff to create movements. Uh, and so I believe Milwaukee, that's why you're sowing into not just Wisconsin, but when you sow into Milwaukee, I believe you're sowing into a kingdom movement, much like the book of Acts that you've been reading about recently, not just for Wisconsin, but for the nation, that this will be a pivotal state in the nation. And so all of that, so I'll get, I'll get there, honey. I know I feel her saying, we'll get to the point. Uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm just laying, <laughs> I'll go slow and then I'll go fast. Uh, I'm looking at the clock. Um, but but I, I, I say that to say our vision right now, uh, God Challenge me as if you, some of you might have met Diane De Los Santos. She went to be with the Lord. She finished her race as a faithful servant this January. And when I met her uh, soon, she was like, God's already prompted me to, to find my successor, I guess. It's, I would say I was in Oklahoma City at the time, and I was doing well and earning good money and doing amazing things. I'd gone to Nepal, Kathmandu, Nepal, doing great stuff, meeting amazing people. And uh, the Lord said, well, it's time for you to build my kingdom now. And I said, all right, Lord, we will go do that. And I connected with Ms. Diane. She prompted me a set of activities and events. And then uh, we, we ended up, we moved our family um, to Milwaukee. Uh, we lived at City in a Hill for a number of months when we first came. And, and it helped us to learn how to pray, and how to really be empathetic with the families that live there. But in, in the neighborhood where we're at, where City on Hill is located, um, 82% of young people under the age of 18 live in poverty. Now, they typically don't live there a long time. They move around Milwaukee, but that's a, a lot of the folks in the actual neighborhood rent. There's not a lot of homes there. So we end up starting relationships with people, and then they move all around the city. So we feel called in doing that, that God has challenged us to say, you've believed me for buildings before. Can I challenge your faith to believe me for cities? Well, I said, you can't do that without God. And then we said, Lord, okay, Lord, just the same God that was with Paul shall be with us. We will believe you for the transformation of cities and the transformation of families. And that, in a nutshell, is kind of the charge that God has given us. Believe me for the transformation of cities and families. How did, God, how did Paul do it? Well, Paul poured into leaders, and they went out and did stuff in every facet of culture in his day. So at City in a Hill, we've, we've got this, this detailed, please take it, and we printed it out, we spent ink in it, so please pass it out. You just take, take all of them, it would be ideal, and just pass them out to people you know, because you might know folks in Milwaukee that need the services. So very much in the practical nature of Jesus' ministry, we want to meet the needs of individuals where they're at and open them up to hear the gospel, but walk with them in that journey. Uh, and so one thing, one way that we do that is healthcare and social services. That's the medical clinic that we do. Just a praise report. We've had that medical clinic for a number of years. It, it, the history of that on the campus dates back to 1863 with the Malkway Hospital before it became City on a Hill. So volunteers that have followed the Lord and volunteered to meet the medical needs of the poor, uh, it's all the, all the way back in the Civil War. So we do that through a medical clinic. We are launching a dental clinic, full-time dental clinic, and the building we're constructing. We're finishing a major project for a dental clinic. We'll have four dental chairs. So if you feel called, know people that are called to dental ministry, they've been dentists or dental hygienists, connect them to us because we're, we're going to do that. We close June, July, and then at, in this fall, we'll start a whole new ministry of service to reach more people, kids and, and, and adults. And then we have behavioral health, mental health services. Through COVID, we realized families had even more stress in their lives. 
And so we started that. We, we work with a Christian therapists and others that meet the needs of people. So we have that. We have a youth and family program, and we have a youth center after school. And so we take kids from uh, 6 to 24, and we serve them. I think about prevention of drugs, life skills, the gospel, discipleship. We do all of it. We do tutoring for reading and literacy, uh, and we're seeing kids. One of the things of poverty is that typically people are going to schools that are not adequately set up. They don't have the finances, resources, the schools to adequately meet their needs, so they're many times years behind in reading. Well, you really can't do anything if you can't read well. You can't teach yourself how to learn, so it's really challenging. We have high schoolers that have come, and they're like, way years behind in their reading. And so we help support that because we feel if we, we, we need you to be able to read and comprehend so that you can read the word, right, and hear the voice of God through the scriptures. Um, we also do spiritual formation and growth. So some of you may have come in the past to a mission trip. So we focus, we have services after the health outreach. We have an encounter service where people can come and be in the presence of God with us. And many people, we don't do a lot of teaching. We do a lot of worship and prayer. So people come, and they may even just start weeping, and they don't even know what's going on. They're, I don't know what's happening to me, but I'm just fe feeling something I've never felt before. And that gives us the opportunity to say, then this is what God is doing. This is God, and this is what he's doing. So we do that uh, once a month after every health outreach, the second Saturday of every month. That's probably the longest standing ministry outreach that we've had. But I encourage you to come. We, people come, and they have stations that they get their needs met, they get a hot meal, they meet with a nurse, they meet, meet with a doctor, social worker, and then we really get to know their needs. I'll, we'll get into the Good Samaritan a little bit, but you meet all the needs, physical needs, emotional needs, financial needs, and then we set them on a trajectory to become well. And then last of all, we do poverty and training work. So we, how many have been to a poverty simulation with City on a Hill? Awesome. Awesome. My wife has. My son has. So we do poverty simulations. If you're like, hey, I don't know. I I've never been poor. I, I, I don't know what that means, especially urban poverty. So we help Christians learn how to identify with those needs so you know how to pray. So we do week-long mission trips. Uh, we do urban plunges. You come on a weekend. Uh, but we also do um, poverty simulations as a part of that. It's a simulated learning experience, 40-some hours where you go through a simulation and you get uncomfortable. And, and it's a great preparation for the mission field if you ever feel called to missions. And then we're teaching you about God's heart, about the poor and the oppressed all through that time. So it's not just you coming to serve, we pour into you that you can come back and identify God's purpose for your life. Um, and then part of that, we do training of what God's heart for, we call it the R3 workshop. We teach you about in, in the world systems and the world beliefs and philosophies, what's God's heart for the poor and, and on the oppressed. So we do that from scripture. So you will get a deposit of that if you come to us. Honey, you think I did? All right, oh, good. All right, so that's good. So I might bring some of those f forward, but, but some of you, it's been a while since you come. Some of you never been there, but it, it is a massive building. It, it is, uh, we did sell some of that property off. So when you come to City on a Hill, I mean, those buildings were constructed in the latest version in the 1950s, 1951, 1952. Um, uh, so you're not going to a five-star resort. Uh, not yet. Uh, so you might, be the, you might be able to change that. But right now, I mean, we, we come and it's a, it's a mission. You, we come here, but we did sell off some of the property, 99 units of family housing that's attached to City on a Hill that is managed by another entity, and then senior housing that's also on the campus. There's a K-12 school that we don't run, but it's on the campus uh, that serves uh, about 1,000, 1,200 kids, uh, K-12. to So uh, I, I feel if you're sitting here and you're like, I, I love the Lord, and I want to learn how my gifts, practice my gifts, and I don't know where to do it, how to do it. We could just come and volunteer at City on a Hill. We have, you know, if you're administrative inclined, if you want to greet, and you've kind of got the woo gift, and you can just talk uh, to anything, you know, come. People love to come and just talk. And, and so come and do that. If, you, if you've got a medical thing in you and you love to care for people, we've got nursing stations and others, come and do that with us. If you, if, you, if you know how to use a screwdriver, hammer, and you know what to call them, come with the facilities team. 
We need that. We, fences, we need stuff. We always have stuff. If you're, if you're strong and you, whatever, I'm, I'm not saying you all in the football team, whatever, but if you are and you've got strength, we need that muscle. We, we're always got heavy things to move around in that campus. So there's plenty to do, but it's not just the doing. My heart is that anyone that comes to City on Hill will encounter the Holy Spirit and that you will hear from God about what your purpose is, whether that's in what we understand as formal ministry behind a pulpit or if it's out in a school system or the medical field or a business or finance, whatever it is, we feel God prepares people through Sydney Hill to do that. All right, if you've got your Bible, now we're going to dive in, uh, and I'll, I'll be quick and amazing uh, in, in what we're going to share. So Matthew, if you go to Matthew 22, 36 through 40, and that's where we're going to spend our time this morning. Um, we've been, there's a lot, of, there's a lot going on in the world. It's a unique time, won't you say? It's a unique generational time. It doesn't happen often. We're in a major shift in a generational era uh, in America, for sure, uh, with, with the shifting of generations, uh, the boomer generation retiring in massive numbers. Uh, and the Gen Z generation likely will become the largest represented generation in the marketplace. That's, that's, that's a big deal. That's a big deal because that's a lot of institutional knowledge that's like shifting away and new ones coming in. So there's massive stuff to systems and markets and all of it. It, it. The world is going through a major change. And God just has a way to like do stuff, like release movements and revivals and key times in history. And Jesus, he said of Jesus, you know, at the right time, he said, you're coming here. During Rome's reign and all the stuff, he's like, right here, you're going to drop. The kingdom of God will come through my son at this time. I think it's a unique time for us to consider. So here uh, in the book of Matthew, uh, just to give you a quick summary. So Matthew captures a pivotal moment where Jesus is engaged. So Matthew, the writer of this book, is a Jew. So he's specifically speaking to a Jewish audience. You got the Gospels, they're all Luke and, and Mark. They're, they're, they each have their own kind of flavor, right? Uh, Matthew is speaking to a Jewish audience. So his, his task in the book is to really reveal to the Jews they've heard of a Messiah for many, many years, to say, this is that. The, Isaiah the prophet said this. This is what Jesus did, and that connects to what he said, the Scripture said about him. So that's Matthew's key task. So in the book of Matthew, he's in this context, this picture, he's dealing with the teachers of the law. Very, very religious people. They knew the word or the Mosaic law. They knew it. Quick case, how many laws did the Jews have at the time when the Pharisees were coming? The number of laws. Anyone know? Yeah, yeah. So I heard over here, it's over 600 laws that they were saying, like, this is what it means to love, the, to serve God. Right? So there's this teacher of the law. Uh, a, a lawyer, and he has this en encounter with the Lord. So I'm going to read it now from Matthew 22, verse 36. This teacher wants to test Jesus and catch him in an error. So he says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Verse 37 says, and he said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. So Jesus starts with the heart. The essence. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is a great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend the whole law and the prophets. So he took all that complexity all of that burden, all of that yoke, and he simplified it. He summed it up in these two key essentials, right? And there was no, like, back thing at Jesus. He just kind of had a way to win arguments quickly, right? And so what, what I want to present to you before we go into a ministry time later, in, in the work that we do at City on a Hill, there's a lot of questions. People have a lot of questions. Why am I, why? Why are we poor? Why did he leave? Why is he in prison? Why, why? There's all these complexities, and who's at fault? Is it the system? Is it the government? Is it the mayor? Is it the police? Is, there's all these chaos in the questions that people live with, right? So sometimes it's just kind of like, ah, 
don't know what to do. I don't know what my purpose is. I am just confused. And so I think the message, part of this message, is to let's go to the context of Jesus. All these laws and all these rules. How do I, how do I hear God? How do I obey God? And Jesus, the two commandments. Love the Lord your God. Go vertical first, right? First, love the Lord your God. First, your whole heart. And, and that's where we start with people. When you come to the medical ministry, people are coming for a toe or foot care uh, or diabetes or their blood pressure, but we're always trying to listen. Is the Lord in this individual's heart? Because I tell you, I met, a, I met a man recently, but he's been with the ministry for a number of years. I call him Derek uh, at the health outreach. And, and, and he, what took my attention is that we had a dentist that day, and, and it was, we're doing construction, so it's kind of tight. And it was like, we're like, okay, all right, sorry, we can do that. And for my Hispanic background, it's fine. Right? It's fine to be in crowds with people. It's cool. It's actually better. Uh, we're in bubbles here in America. It's different. But like, and I'm like, okay, I'm all right. I'm all right. You can be in my space. It's okay. But I was talking to him, and he showed up on time. He, he's like showed up. He had an appointment with the dentist, and he was early. He was set up. He was dressed up. He was ready to go. He had a tie and everything. He was a little better than I. I he just had like a sweater. So he was looked sharp. African-American guy. Um, and uh, I said, well, we're not ready for you. But uh, so I went and got the paperwork, got him the paperwork. I said, would you just sit here, complete it? So, man, you went to, to doing it. Um, and... and yeah, I came back, and I said, wait here, and I'll come back. I'll go talk to the dentist. And he was right there, and he was ready to go. I took him down. And, um, but I could tell as I listened to what he said, this man loves the Lord. What came out of his mouth. And, to, and, it, and sometimes people can be kind of like, just tell you what you want to hear. But it wasn't like that for him. And I could tell the Lord was real. And he said, you know, I... I went to prison. I, I was dealt with alcoholism and narcotics as a drug addict. I struggled, went to prison. Uh, when I came out, there were very few places that would serve me. But City on a Hill served me. And I met Ms. Diane. And she loved me. And I didn't feel judged. And I could just come. And I said, man, that's awesome. Praise the Lord. And I said, so what do you like about City on a Hill? Um, and he said, well, I find community. I mean, I come meet with the dentist, but I'll stay or vision care, and I'll do, they'll do, in 20 minutes, it's done. I got glasses, but I'll stay for an hour because I just want to talk. I just want to, and he talks Jesus. He's talking Jesus. He says, it's the Lord. He said, now, I relapse at one point, and it's just a struggle because you got to keep discipleship sometimes, especially it's, it's not a one-time deal. It's like constant, the Lord coming. So I relapsed, but then it came back, and I wasn't judged. People still walk with me. So I said, well, you know, here's my info. Let's call. I want you to be part of our neighborhood council. And he's like, I'll give you my word. And I'm true to my word. I will call you this week. He did. He called me. Boom, left me a voicemail. He's like, so he's going to be joining our neighborhood council. But I say this to say, somewhere in his journey, this man, he learned what it meant to look upward in his chaos and learn to love the God of the Bible, because I could hear it in his words. The testimony, the praise, saying, I'm not perfect, Art, I'm not done, but, you know, he, he's the one that deserves all the glory. So that's our reminder to all of us that in the, in the context of what's going on in the world, that God calls you, just to simplify it, love him with all of your heart, all of it. So if there's something in your heart that is the barrier for you fully releasing your love to him. Let him deal with it. Give it to him. For Derek, it, it was a lifestyle. It was, it was part of the trauma that he was dealing with that moved him to drugs to just cope, just to get by. Because sometimes it's just the emotional trauma, the pain. You just got to know the, just quiet the pain and the chaos. But the Lord is the answer that can come and, and say, I will bring life to that area, uh, your soul and your mind. So we believe God is about restoring individuals from the inside out. And, and it, it takes this looking upward to the Lord. 
Um, I, I read stories about the Milwaukee Hospital back in 1863. I, I just feel that when we came on that campus, it was a very special place. Like, you could come to a place and know there's history here, like old revivals, old wells that the Lord said, there's stuff here. And when I came on, there was like, that's a ton of people that have prayed on this campus. And, and, and definitely for the history of City and Hill, but even back to 1863, there's actually books written about the Milwaukee Hospital, and we've, we've got them at City and Hill. We read them of people, literally when it was first opened, it was a 10-acre farm that, that they didn't have the money and, and they, were, they couldn't find a place outside of Milwaukee. At that time, Milwaukee, it's a civil, civil war time. They were going through, a, through their own type of pandemic. It was smallpox. And it was just going through the population at the time. And hospitals were not a thing back then. Y'all, I'm from Texas, y'all. Uh, they weren't a thing as much. So there was a lot of opposition. But Christians were one of the first that heard the burden of the Lord to start hospitals. So they... they um, there were a set of believers that started this off and believed God to supply the funds, and it was a labor of love and sacrifice, but they started this place. They bought a 10-acre farm. It is on a hill. If you come to City Hill, we do have a small hill in the back of the building that oversees the, the downtown Milwaukee. Um, but, but we find it as a way that we've seen from the very beginning, and there's this moving piece of when they first opened it, it was a lot of women, actually, a lot of volunteer women that had come, even from Germany, that had come to Pittsburgh, one of the first Protestant hospitals that eventually came and served in the Milwaukee Hospital. But there's moving reference. There were four or six people there that the first service, they got, got down on their knees, and they had like a, picture, a, a portrait that had been gifted. There were two. One was the picture of the lamb, a lamb, the lamb of God, and they bowed down. They offered the campus to the work of the Lord and the ministry. And... And over generations, I mean, some of it, they've lost their way, and it's come back, and we're in this next era. So to say right now, we want to build a community of people, young people, that go through city on a hill, that their first cry is, we will love the Lord our God. The Jews just said, the Lord is one. The Lord, the Lord first, right? Boom, and that's, that's what we're about. Second point. Uh, he talks about the neighbor, love your neighbor, because people feel like, well, in this chaos, I don't know what to do. Like, people are nuts. People are crazy. Uh, an old friend from us in Texas w would say something like, you know, to what she taught her kids, and she was in, in, in government for all the youth and politics, uh, and she would say to her kids, you know, well, principle of life, the world isn't fair, and some people are stupid. You just got to know that. It's, it's a hard world out there, y'all. It's hard. And, and you see crazy things. But I believe that Jesus intentionally went to the most desperate places during his public ministry. Where the disciples felt like we're going here, he would pivot and say, no, we're going to go to Samaria. Right? And so if you do this history, there was Jews and, and Samaritans, like we're not like the best of friends. Um, but he would go to very complicated places at, at times. And there were meaning in all of it, why Jesus did the things he did. They all had meaning. They, they all fulfilled some type of prophecy in the Old Testament. Um, but it, in it all, I, I'm saying all of this to say sometimes in our world, because of the chaos in the world, we choose, we opt to get comfortable instead. And a global pandemic like COVID-19 made that even more so for many to say, I'm going to get in my safety and I'm stuck here. You kind of lose something because the Lord, when he calls you, his own life shows you a missional lifestyle. You go. Go into all the world. You go. It's not like stay. If you look at the Old Testament, I mean, the Tower of Babel, I'm going to get into that, but people were like, well, we're going to stay, and we're going to build, and build this thing. And God said, no, no, I don't want that. And he came and messed it all up, right? Dispersed them all over the ends of the earth. So God's calling, it's, it's to go, whether you're going in prayer, you're somehow, like, be outside of yourself. But first, you got to go to the Lord first. When you come into the presence of God, you find identity, you find purpose, and he changes your heart for his heart. I find people sometimes come to serve at City on a Hill, and I can tell they haven't spent time with the Lord. 
because they've got a personal agenda that may not be the Lord's agenda. And, and I said, well, you got a quota. Does that make sense? And I said, it's, it's cool, but people can sense whether you're authentic or not. But I can tell the difference when someone's been with the Lord. So go first to the Lord, like the Lord said, love the Lord your God. And then when you do that, the Lord will always send you out. He will always commission you to the other commandment, which is now love your neighbor. Now, one of these teachers, when they came to Jesus, he said, okay, Lord, well, I'm going to test you. Or, or later in another exchange of this similar thing, they said, well, who's my neighbor? Who's my neighbor, Lord? And he defined it with the story of the Good Samaritan, right? And, and somebody was in, he just shared like a parable. And it was this, this man that was going from one place to the next and he, he falls and he's needy and he, they beat him up and he's there and... One of like the priest comes in and he's like, oh, I'm going to go through the other side. I'm not going to stop. I'm just going to go a distance. And another man comes and the same thing. But then there's this Samaritan, one that would be very, very different. I don't know. Think of your, like in your context, what would be the equivalent of somebody you wouldn't really associate with? It might be somebody financially or, or somebody that looks a certain way or somebody that doesn't speak your language. Somebody that you would be like, oh, no, <laughs> that's not, it's okay, Lord, but not, that's, Jesus is just making a point. Typically, you don't define it by look or socioeconomic status. It's who has a need, and you go meet that need. And typically, it's like he, he, those that typically wouldn't have a need met. Uh, and so that's what the, Jesus covers. And I'll just make this reference to Leviticus 19 about this one. Love your neighbors as do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against anyone among your people, but love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Um, and we find that at City on a Hill. So Karen and I, you know, I, I we, coming from Texas, we dealt a lot with Spanish-speaking people uh, and served that demographic. And, and then we spent five and a half years in Oklahoma City. And as a part of that, we learned a lot about the African-American family and community. We didn't know. I mean, sitting on the hill with Milwaukee wasn't even in our paradigm. We led a small group of family and couples, all African-American and we learned, God taught us something about what he was doing in that people group through that experience, five and a half years. And then the Lord said, well, I'm going to send you to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where like 70 some plus percent of people are African-American. And, and God prepared us to understand how to love, love our neighbor. So I, I feel some of you may feel stuck. And you might look at your context and be like, I don't know, but the Lord is faithful to reveal to you who are you called to. All of you are called to someone, to someone, and be in action before the Lord to define that. And if you don't know what that is, go, again, go to the Lord, love him with all your heart, love him with all your mind, all your strength, all your soul. And if you do those things, do the self-work to do that, you will get clarity on the other. Love your neighbor. Um, because I believe, again, God makes no mistakes. Whatever your journey he will use. He doesn't waste. When he, the seven days of creation, he looked at his creation, he said, it's good. It's good. He looked at you, it's good. Doesn't mean that God agrees with everything that's happened in your life. There's, there's an aspect of like, he will allow us to go through things, but if you come to him, he can restore anything. But in loving your neighbor, um, there's a unique gift that each of you have in your life. He's put something in you that somebody else needs. And when you're not in the game, the team doesn't win. There's something in you, and that's a whole purpose of the ministry of the leaders in your church, to equip you for the work of your ministry to the earth. So what's the consequence if you don't obey? Well, God always will raise up another, but the world fails to fully see Jesus in their time. You may be part of a delay that somebody has cried out to God and said, Lord, I have nothing else. And we see that. A mom with children say, I literally, tomorrow, I have no place for my kids. And I've gone to this program with the city of Milwaukee, the Milwaukee County, and I've gone here, and I literally, I, this, you're my last resort. I, and they pray to the Lord. 
And maybe the Lord's tapped you and said, oh, I should provide something. And if you say no, it may mean that that individual is delayed and they end up in the street for a time until God moves on somebody else. Right? So all of you have a calling in the Lord. And in wrapping up, and I, is there somebody who's going to join me here to talk? I, I feel like we are in a time where the greatest movement through the church in the history of time like we are stepping into that time. In some places, it's already happening. And as we do that, this, this scriptures, these scriptures about a lifestyle of sacrifice and obedience, what does it mean to live as a disciple today? My charge by the Spirit of God is to hopefully deposit something in each of you by the message that it will cause you to go into the presence of the Lord to know him. Because there's an aspect of knowing God that you can only encounter him when you're on mission. For Jesus, it meant the cross, obedience to that. But that wasn't the only thing he was doing. He also said, I've come to destroy the works of the devil. Right? But the cross was a key part of it. But it was a hard, probably one of the hardest Say, Lord, if you can do, Father, if you could take, if this, if there's a way that you take this cup, would you, I just want to ask, would you take it? But once he knew, the Lord knows it has, it has to be this way. Not my will, your will be done. But you got to go to the Lord. You got to be intimate with the Lord, right? No one can give you that assignment. You could take this, you could choose to take somebody else's assignment because you watched a book, read a book or went to YouTube, you know, that's a really cool testimony. I want it to be a message. Fine, but it may not be what God had called you to. You got to go to the Lord. And I promise you, we sang about the faithfulness of God. God is faithful to give you purpose. And once you have that, to ask the Lord, Lord, who is my neighbor? And what did you prompted me to do with my time, with my talent, with my treasure. What are you asking me to do? Because that's where you find purpose. Being radically generous with everything God has given you. I can't wait for the day that I can do more work than Oprah and say, I want to give cars and I want to give homes. As, as I mean that. 100%. I'm like, I, just like David came in the middle of the war with Goliath, and Goliath was mocking God's people. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Did he dare mock the armies of the living God? And I think in some ways, Pastor, we need that. I'm back in the church to say, read me the stats, and you get all depressed. And I'm like, no, man, it's just a starting point. Like, it's just a starting point. I trust the Lord to show up. And I didn't even get time uh, to get into the Goshen context, but God always reserves a place of obedience for his people when there's always favor and blessing. There may be a famine in Egypt, but God sets apart a Goshen, a place where people come and they experience the blessings and the favor and the answer of the Lord. Always, and we feel the city on a hill is that type of place. So when you come, I hope that you will partner with Cindy and the others on the team to say, when you come to city on a hill, you're not just serving us. We are intentionally praying that both residents and guests and others who come will be so radically touched by the Lord that if you're maybe in the wrong place in your life, he will pivot you and launch you somewhere. Will you stand with me as I close? I, I feel a, a, a grace to pray over you, but first I, I want to start with... Um, I think I went mute. Oh, there we go. Um, I want to just pray for you because you've sown into our ministry... Will you just extend your hands as we pray? I just feel there's a grace by the Lord in the work that they've been a part of. Matt and Amanda, right? 
All right. Four kids. Five kids. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Man, I didn't count right on the website. Five kids. All right. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we thank you for this ministry. We thank you for this family, Lord, that has been commissioned to serve your people, to build in these times. And I thank you that it wasn't another time, but this time, in this generation, that they've been called. Lord, I just pray for them that as David, it is said of him that he served the purposes of God in his generation. I thank you for these two and for their family, that they will indeed serve the purposes of God in their generation. And I see an image, it's, it's like I just feel this intense pressure. It's almost like when somebody has a major accident and there's massive trauma to a body part uh, and, and there's inflammation and there's pressure and the healing cannot fully take place until the pressure is released. And I, I, I saw like the hand of the Lord coming and like whatever that thing needed to, like this unwinding of the thing that was keeping the pressure in. And, and, and I just saw the Spirit of God remove that. And it was like this release of the pressure out of context uh, so that the healing could happen. And I hear the Lord, I asked the Lord, Lord, what does that mean? Uh, and, and at least a part of it means, I felt in the Spirit, that the Lord was saying, whatever the journey has been for the two of you and what he is building, you have been pregnant also with a, a task from the Lord. And there's, there's been like this healing that he's desired to have come about and it hasn't quite lifted but i hear this is a new day for you the pressure is going to lift and the healing will be rapid after that point and some things that you've been diligent to pray for will they will begin to manifest now so lord i just release and say prophetically god that the hand of god comes from heaven releases that valve thing that needs to be released that the pressure of the season of the past will lift starting now we just release the wind of god over these two we say god in jesus name that the spiritual muscle maturity of those around them will just catapult to a whole nother level i will say lord give them a hundredfold return in that which they've sown into the work of god in this season in jesus name amen can you give God a hand offering? Thank you. And, and I just want to pray a blessing now. Uh, th there is a thing about young people. Uh, I've been drawn to these young people here. And I was like, oh, it's the guy with the young people thing. Uh, the thing. <laughs> but, but God does have a heart for young people because right? you're the future of the church, right? Like you, you're in it. Um, and, and there's a tenderness. There, there, there's, there's something that God will deposit in you that will touch the ends of the earth. Um, there's, where's the worship leader guy who was singing? He, he's teaching. All right. Well, you, you can give him the word. Uh, um, but, but God said in him, he was right here. He was singing, right? Uh, so the Lord says there's, there's a, there, there is a song in him. There, there is actually, um, uh, help me, Holy Ghost. I was over there. I was, I should have written it down. Um, there's a set of songs in him. There's an album that's present in him, that's in his womb. He may not even know about it, but there's an album in him. Uh, and it, it's, it's got a deep connection to, to, to the nations, that it must be heard. It must be heard. And, and, I, I, and I pray for him that the Lord will put the right people around him, that whatever, I, I think I saw, I'm just looking at you, I don't know, I'm, I'm just charging you to say, share the message, um, uh, which is just let him know that God's encouraged. God will find a path to get that thing distributed into the nations as it needs to. But God will use it tremendously. Uh, and and, and I, I feel like in the church of Antioch, um, there, there were unique gifts in that, in that church. And, and God used it to, to spread the kingdom of God. And I feel amongst your young people, God will come uh, and they will have deep clarity in, in, in the calling of the Lord for them. They won't like walk into the world. There's a lot of confusion in young people right now. There's, there's intentional targeted attack against this next generation uh, because, because of the m massive move of the Lord. God always needs generals to steward movements. It doesn't, he needs people, right? He needs relationships. And, 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 and just like in the time of Jesus, there were kings that were like, we're gonna take them out. Like it happened for Moses, it happened in Jesus. They're like, we're gonna take them out before it happens. But the Lord says he will put a, a special grace over your young people to guard them and protect them. 
Pray for them, church. But the Lord will put a mantle of grace and protection on them. They will be pure, pure, pure. And where there is any instance of that not being the case, the Lord, the Holy Spirit will come. He'll bring conviction. He's going to raise a standard for your young people. Uh, that when you come into places, you will be able to carry the message of the Lord. Uh, and I just see like dominoes, dominoes together. It's like you all have stacked them. Dominoes. And, and, it's, and it's part of this release. It's like you all have over the years taken time to set up the dominoes. And it's like one of those, I don't have TikTok. Well, we'll see how hell does, but I don't. But like if you see a video on YouTube and you got the dominoes and they're set up and they're very intricate, right? And they're just kind of like doing the weave and all of a sudden somebody like hits the one domino and it just goes. And I, I just declare the word of the Lord over this church that the faithfulness of the Lord will release a catalytic flipping of the domino in the name of Jesus that it will touch every generation, every generation f- from the cradle to those who are close to the grave. The Spirit of God says none of you will be left out of the movement that he will release. Every single one of you will be a part of it. And you, if you want to, will be touched by the Spirit of God. And you will find fulfillment. You will find purpose. And the ends of the earth will hear about this church in Mayville, Wisconsin. Because the Lord will desire it so. And it was said of Antioch in that church... They were gifts. The same will be said of all of you. So with that, Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray a a blessing on behalf of City on a Hill. The grace that you have called us, Lord, to be and serve the most destitute people with the love of God, with the message of Jesus, with the promise of his kingdom and the good news. Lord, I pray that you would equip every believer every family in this community to receive power from on high to be the vessels that they need to be in the earth. In the name of Jesus, amen. We'll be at the table back there. Come and say hi. We'd love to meet you. Uh, We're going to have ushers at each door if you want to just so directly into City on the Hill and Ark and his family. So uh, we invite you to do that. God bless you. Have a great day. Uh, if you want to do that, uh, but you're not prepared, and you can do that in the app or you can do that um, uh, online. You can mark special missions guest. Yeah, something like that, and Andre will figure it out. But with that, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of your Sunday.